Hello friends, welcome to the Formula Engineering Classroom. And our first lecture is all about fluid mechanics. And this first lecture is all about is the introduction of fluid and the properties of fluid. So first we have to define what is the fluid is. So means when we have to define what is the fluid. So from the definition we can see this one. Fluid is a substance which deforms continuously when subjected to external shearing force. So in this definition there are two terms deform continuously and external shearing forces. So let us analyze this. So let in this case we are considering a solid surface here and there is some fluid over this solid surface. Now the layer of fluid which is exactly stick to this solid surface can't move that is exactly stick to this solid surface because there is adhesive forces between this one. adhesive forces are so strong that this layer can't move this condition is defined is no step condition so when we are applying a force that is tangential to this fluid layers so if we are analyzing at one particular cross section so let us marking some points here like this point, this point, this point, this point, this point and all these points. So means when we are defining and when we are trying to analyze. So when we apply the force, this point, let us marking this point is point A, will move from here to here at A dash after some time interval. Similarly, this point, let this point is B, this will move from here to here. Then this is C point, this will move from here to here, but this point can't move because this is stick to the solid surface and as the velocity of the solid surface is also zero, this point velocity, this particle velocity of this fluid is also zero. So over the time interval, this point will move continuously like that. So you can see the effect. So this is the continuous deformation when subjected to external shearing force. So through this way we can define the definition of fluid. So fluid is substance which deform continuously when subjected to external shearing force. Now fluid poses some characteristics like first of all it's a very basic definition here. Um, very basic characteristic here. First one it has no definite shape of its own. We know this one but conforms the shape of containing vessel. It's obvious. Fluid doesn't have its own shape and definitely when we will pour in some container it will conform the shape of that particular container or vessel. This is obvious case. Now second one even a small amount of shear force exerted on fluid will cause it to undergo a deformation which continues as long as the force continues applies on it. It's obvious means if this force when we are applying this shearing force on this one and that this magnitude of this force is very much small so it doesn't matter and in every case the fluid will start to deform and deform continuously up to when this force is applied third one so in third case we are comparing solids and fluids so in solids so solid suffers strain when subjected to shear force Whereas fluid suffers rate of strain, this is very much important. Fluid suffers rate of strain, that is, it flows under similar circumstances. So, let as we know from our previous class definitions, that if I am saying the Hooke's law, so Hooke's law for the solid within the elastic limit, that I am saying is some solid body. And this is fixed here and if I am applying a shear force with this one this force is tangential to the cross section area A so due to this force applied then I am saying this point is B point and this point is C point so due to this force applied the shape of this solid will change so means it will look like this one
that this point is C dash, this point is B dash, right? And it provides some angle, and I'm saying this is theta. So from the Hooke's law for the solids, we can say that there is shear stress, shear stress tau is proportional to shear strain. Shear strain is here, change in angle, that is theta. This is for solids. Shear stress is what? Shear stress actually tau is force upon the area, this force and upon this area. So for solids, this is the case. Shear stresses are directly proportional to strain. So that's why you are saying solid suffer strain is direct strain when subjected to shear force. That's this. Now, in case of fluid, in case of fluid, tau, that is shear stress, is not proportional to shear strain. It's proportional to rate of strain. It's proportional to rate of strain. It would like this one. It deform contours. This is the behavior of fluid. So that's why the fluids are different from solids. That's why we are saying solids suffer strain, this one, this one, and fluid suffers a rate of strain like that. We will see this concept in next lectures when we will see the properties here. Right, so this is the basic definition of fluid, and these are the characteristics of fluid. All right. Now, to understand the fluid, we have to define some properties of fluid. So next we will deal with the fluid properties. All right. So so to define the fluid property we will first understand what is the system is. So let understand system. So let I am defining some region of space in which there is some substances present. So what is system is? So system is actually it's an amount of matter whose characteristics are under investigation. So when I am defining this space, this is an amount of matter whose characteristics are under investigation. So when we are saying this is our system, so system will consist of some boundary. This boundary is not physical actually. This boundary is hypothetical boundary or physical boundary. Or it's a space occupied by this matter. So now, to define properties or why you need to define the properties. Actually, properties are required to define the state of the system. Like if I am saying, let this is some matter, there is some boundary here and right now there is some pressure that I am saying the pressure is P1 and there is some temperature, the temperature is T1. Right, this is the initial state of the system. Let I am saying for a room, for room the pressure is 1 atmospheric and temperature is around 25 degrees centigrade. Now, due to some external energy transformation, right, within the system that or out of the system, the properties of the system is going to change. Like the pressure and temperature of the system is going to change. So, if let I am saying there is some heat transfer in the system. In that case, the pressure and the temperature will change like that. If that we are defining, this is P2 and this is T2. So these properties are defining what is the state of the system. That's why we require properties. All right? These properties are defining the state of the system. So we can define properties in two types. So, 
we can define or categorize the properties two types. First is intensive properties. Intensive properties. Second is extensive properties. This is extensive properties. Properties. All right. So. What is the sense of intensive and extensive properties? So let first we understand what is intensive properties. So intensive properties are those which are independent of mass. These are independent of mass. Independent of mass. So let us understand what is the sense of independent of mass. So let here I am considering some system. And for the system, the mass is m, the pressure is p, the volume is v initially. Now let if I am providing some partition over here. That is exactly dividing the system in two exact halves. So definitely in this case, the mass of this part and the mass of this part is going to half. So we can see this one. The mass for this part is m by 2. And for this part, also m by 2. The volume, the volume is also, in this case, is going to be half, that is v by 2. And here, v by 2. But what about pressure? The pressure remains same. Like if you are saying that this is our room and in room we are providing some curtain here that is dividing the room in two halves. So both the side the pressure will remain same P and P that is atmospheric pressure. That means the pressure is not depending on amount of mass. Initially when the mass was M the pressure was p now the mass is half the pressure is also p so pressure is a intensive property similarly temperature is also intensive property so we can define that is pressure temperature are the intensive property similarly specific properties are also intensive properties so what are the specific properties? Specific properties are defined as property per unit of mass. Like if I'm saying U is an internal energy. So if I'm saying that this is the internal energy of the system. So the specific internal energy, specific internal energy internal energy that is equals to internal energy upon mass so as this property that is small u I am defining the internal energy by capital U and the specific internal energy by the small u so this specific internal energy is per unit of mass so as we are dividing the mass in this property that's why this is free from the mass Similarly, we can define specific entropy, specific enthalpy. All these are the independent of mass. Means all these properties are the intensive properties. So we can say this one. There is properties which are independent of mass are defined as intensive property like pressure, temperature and all specific properties. Now density. Density is also or mass density is also intensive property because this is also free from the mass now what are the extensive properties so extensive properties are just reverse of this one means they are dependent on mass they are dependent on mass like if I'm saying weight so weight 
is equals to mass into gravitational acceleration. So definitely if mass increases, the weight also increases. So means weight is completely dependent on mass. Right. That's why weight is an extensive property. That is dependent on mass. Similarly, volume. Definitely you can see here in this example. As the mass is going half, the volume is also going half. So volume is also extensive property. Right. Mass itself is the property of matter. So mass is also extensive property because this is also the property. So means weight, volume, mass all are the dependent and that's why these properties are termed as extensive properties all right in the next lecture we will see some properties of fluid we will define them thank you for the watching the video see you in the next lecture take care of yourself